This is my Stargazer Micro Camper, and I also use it as a forest office. Great place to just hang out, do some work, chill. I wanna show you how I built it and convince you to build one too. Anybody can do it, trust me. First, let's take a tour. So the idea for this build came from Deke Diedrichsen, his book, Micro Shelters. I love his stuff. He's got a YouTube channel called RelaxShacks.com. In the back of Micro Shelters was a concept build by a guy named Sage Rad. And to my knowledge, it's never been built. It's just a concept. And there's just some loose plans to kind of give you an idea of what he had in mind. I took these plans, translated it to a real build, and it turned into what I call the Stargazer Micro Camper. So let's get to the build, but thank you Deke for your inspiration in these books and uh, go check out his stuff. Well, every good project starts with a trip to Menard. So here we are and back with the load of lumber. One piece of three quarter inch plywood for this project, it's gonna be the floor. You're gonna need to protect a lot of this build with a waterproof stain or paint of your choice. Just need typical painting materials. I like this Pittsburgh Ultra Advanced. You can get it in any color. A lot of the work right up front with this build is preparing your materials by painting or staining them so they're ready to go when you're ready to use them. So that's what I've got to do first. Next thing to lay out is the arches and this can be a little bit confusing. I went with six foot high end wall so you're going to want to mark that. Now take the width of your opening and divide it by two, marking that. In my case, two feet or 24 inches. Now we're going to divide that number in half and mark at 12 inches from our top line at 6 feet. Where those two lines intersect, that's where you put down a nail or a screw to secure a scrap piece of wood to use as a lever. Secure your pencil and draw down to the edge of the wood, creating your arch. 
Do one half at a time. When you get one side done, go right back to your top line, your six foot line, and go down the other side. There's a great YouTube video from a channel called Matt Bangs Wood that really spells this out, and I'll put the link below. Now that you've got it all figured out, all you need to do is replace it with your other end piece and trace it out. And repeat with the cutting. Now it's time to employ the same technique we just used for the end wall arches to figure out your door arch. Determine the height and the width and the placement of your door and then just employ the same technique to do the arch. The door I'm using here measures 24 inches wide by 66 and a half inches high. Again, if you need more clarity, I really suggest checking out uh, the Matt Banks Wood video on how to lay out these arches. It'll make a lot more sense when you watch that. Now it was time to trace around my little porthole window. And it comes in two pieces. And you want to make sure you're going to trace it with the inside of the circle, not the outside. I had a few <laughs> challenges with this one. I, I got my lines off, but got it all figured out and I lowered my window a little. So now I'm going to cut it out. In order to start with the jigsaw, you need to drill a couple holes to give space for your jigsaw blade to get in there. Then you can just use your jigsaw to trim up the circle. And my particular little porthole window came with this little weird uh, bump out spot that I had to work at to get to fit right. And then it's just a process of dry fitting and making sure your window fits correctly. Sometimes it takes a little doing, but you just keep doing micro adjustments until it fits in there. Here we go. That'll be a fun window. I was constantly making design choices and getting stuff stained as I went. On the opposite end wall, I had a window. It's just a little tempered glass shed window. Any window of your choice will work. Just determine the placement, trace it out, and use your jigsaw to cut it out. I wanted a window that would open, and I also wanted one that had that arch top to match the end walls, and I got lucky and found this one. You can find a link to this window in the description below. There we go. Next up was to determine where my rafters would go. I simply started the first one where the arch and the straight wall ended and I traced around it. I just repeated that around the perimeter in initially three places and then I actually added two more later. That's how I found the middle spot right there. Next step is just cut them out with a jigsaw. Next thing you want to do is dry fit a spare piece if you've got it. You want that flush on the outside and you want those pieces to, to be nice and snug. To make sure it matches the other end, you simply lay it on top of the one you haven't done yet and trace it in place so they match exactly. Another round of cutting and dry fitting and you're ready to go. After giving it some thought, I decided to add two more rafters. So I cut out two more spaces and in total, we're gonna have five rafters for this project. When you work alone, you have to think of shortcuts. So here I am just adding a box so that when I cut my rafters, it'll have something to catch it. I'm cutting 10 foot two by fours into two by twos. In total, you need three 10 foot two by fours that will be cut into six pieces and you're gonna use five. Next up, I sanded the end walls, cleaning up some of the stamps and getting it smoothed out and decided to add some stenciling for a cool kind of fern-like effect. And I really liked how it turned out. Just using some of this matte folk art uh, outdoor paint and just using a stencil, you want to use as little paint as possible when you're doing this. And I just think it turned out great. I like it. What you got? You 
got a bowl? <laughs> For my hitch, I need a two and a half inch square board. So I'm going to laminate these two pieces together with construction adhesive. Look at this. This thing just split. Let me put it in there. I'm not going to let it go to waste. This stuff is expensive, so I'm just going to spread it by hand. My hitch is 10 foot 6 inches long. Just going to clamp it and let them dry overnight. Now it's time to wrestle that 3 quarter inch plywood back on the sawhorses. I want to finish the bottom, which will be the floor. So what I'm going to do first is sand it all down, get it really nice and smooth. Then I'm going to finish it with a couple coats of satin varathane floor finish. I sanded between coats and let it dry. Feels good. Nice and smooth. Love it. Now it's onto the sidewalls and I'm using half inch plywood. I'm measuring the sidewalls to be three feet. So marking that out and cutting it with the skill saw. And hang on to those scrap pieces. That's what's going to build your bench at the end. And a quick coat of varathane to finish. Repeat for the other side. Goodness. So I just finished putting a clear coat on the top of this and in my mind I had flipped this over so I could put this on the other side and I just put it over top of the nice gloss I just put on here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is going to be back against the wall. You probably won't see it but I'll know it's there and it'll drive me crazy. I'm going to turn it into something instead of a blob. Maybe a heart, a black heart. You have to love your mistakes. There we go. We're going to go with that. Next up, I decided to put a protective coat over all of the stencil work that I did just to protect it more. Just a nice quick coat of varathane. And I'm on to decorating the door. I decided it would be a nice accent piece against the opposite end wall. I found this really cool pieced pine board at Menards, and that's what's going to make the table. My shelf. That'll be really pretty. And that spare piece will be used for the legs. Meanwhile, a couple coats of varathane will finish it off. It's going to be really pretty. All right, time to get to the hitch. Let's get this thing cut up. I need it two and a half inches square for my one and seven eighths inch ball hitch. So whatever size you've got, make sure you give it a good measure. That's the size you're going to want your entire hitch to be. In my case, it's two and a half by two and a half. So now I've got to cut this thing down. And since the saw isn't deep enough to cut in one pass, I had to run it through both ways. Again, I use the box method to help catch that on the other end when I'm by myself. And there you go. Now I've got to cut off this way. Now I need this to be two and a half, so I need to cut off half an inch here. Ah, perfect. Okay, there's our hitch. Here I've got two pre-stained 10 foot 2x4s. What I'm doing here is kind of chamfering the edges. So that when this gets flipped over, it, it'll have a little bit of an angle against the ground. I'm going to do that on both ends and just mirror it on each one so they match. Cut it with a skill saw and you're good to go. Make sure and finish that off with some stain. Attach it with a couple of screws. And then when you flip the whole thing over, you'll be adding more screws from the top down. Now it's time to attach the hitch, measure it out for the middle, and screw it in place. I didn't put any construction adhesive in here before I screwed a couple of these down. I just loosened them up. I'm going to add some construction adhesive. Put everything glued and screwed. Now I'm cutting some blocks to reinforce the area where my threaded rod will go through that will form my axle. I want to glue and screw those and then measure the spot in the middle where you want to drill. 
Now keep in mind that your drill is only so deep. So the three blocks in the middle, you're gonna wanna do those two at a time, not all three or you won't get through. This part definitely takes a little bit of finagling and patience to make sure everything lines up and checks out. So you're just constantly checking and rechecking and drilling your holes as you go. I used a sledgehammer to tap the rod through and make a mark on the block. And then I would pull the rod back out and drill where it made the mark. All right, here we are to the wheels. These are heavy duty cartwheels by Lap Wagons. I'll put the link below. And again, this is just a three quarter inch threaded rod. These wheels have a three quarter inch bearing. And there you go. You would just add another washer and nut on the outside. And that's kind of like the dry fit for the first wheel. With the other wheel on, now I can measure where I need to cut this three quarter inch rod off. I'm gonna mount the other wheel with a washer on each side and the nut, and then I'm gonna take a marker and mark off enough space for the nut. Then I'm gonna take that into the bandsaw and cut it off right where my mark is. After that, I'm just gonna touch up those threaded rods a little bit with a file just to straighten them out and make them not so sharp. Then back to my frame to see how it fits. Again, it's a little tricky. You gotta tap it in with a sledgehammer. It's a, it's a pretty tight fit. And then you can even it out so that both of the wheels have enough space for mounting. Again, you can see those extra support blocks against the hitch that runs the length of this build and the edges. There we go. Axle and the wheels are on. All right, I need a couple more side supports and I'll be ready to flip this thing over. I'm just gluing and screwing a couple pieces of two x four in between the axle and the edges just for more support. And don't forget to finish off your cut ends. All right, so here's the finished underside with the supports. And now it's time to flip it over and get to work on the rest of it. This really would be a lot more handy with two people and that way you don't have a chance of bending your axle. And now that it's flipped over, you want to go ahead and screw down everything from the top to give it a lot more strength. Next thing I'm doing is adding two by twos around the perimeter and I want to offset them a half an inch. This is going to give my sidewalls room to sit on the base, just like this. Once that's in place, screw them in and you're good to go. Oops. The black heart plagues me again. There's no fixing that. So we're going to have to undo it and flip it around to the other side if I want it where I want it, which is hidden under the bed. So go ahead and attach your two pieces using screws. You can pre-drill them. makes it a lot easier to put them up. And then your sides are up. Next thing you want to do is add another piece of 2x2 two two to every corner. So measure it out in place, cut them, and place them just like this. All these two by twos are adding structural integrity to your little camper, but they're also giving you a place to screw things together. Now it's time to attach the end walls and you can use a little cheater piece screwed in from the bottom to help you place that and secure it with screws. Now add another two by two to the front and attach your door wall. It's time to install the rafters, but first we're going to mark them at the eight foot mark. That way they will be evenly installed from end to end, leaving a two foot overhang for the porch. You want the back wall rafters to be even with the wall. Whoops, <laughs> forgot the stabilizers. There we go. Go ahead and add the rest and concentrate on making sure that they're flush with the back wall and that the other end meets up with the mark you made before you installed them. Go ahead and just pound them in and make sure they're flush with the top. 
Next thing you want to do is add in the rafter ties on every single one. At this point I decided I wanted to add two extra pieces going from each side to the hitch for more stability. I just laid it in place and marked it for the angle cuts. There we go. I'm going to cut that and I'll mirror that on the other side. I'll get some supports here. With those cuts made, now I just screwed them in place. Here's a look from underneath. I highly recommend doing this while you've got the trailer upside down and it's easier to get to. All right, that's good to go. This'll, that'll do that a lot of good, stabilizing that front part. Now I need to attach my hitch receiver. Drilling out the holes for this hitch uh, took a little bit of patience and finagling because I didn't drill straight when I went through the first time. So then I had to just keep trying, keep put it, putting the hitch on and uh, drilling through the holes in the hitch to make it all work out and I finally got it. My bolts were a little too long and I need different nuts but this will do for now. Time to install that back window. Just going to use some construction adhesive, put it in place, and lock it down with some screws. It's time to cut the polycarbonate for the roofing. Using a T-square and tin snips, I cut it down to 10 foot 6 inches. This leaves me with a 2.5 inch overhang on the back and an overhang of 2 foot 2.5 inches on the porch. I installed the middle panel first, centering it, using 1 inch polycarbonate self-sealing roofing screws. I'll show you in a minute. So this is the screw I'm using for the poly. And when you screw it down, this, this rubber gasket expands and makes the hole watertight. You need a quarter inch hex head on your drill for this, just like that. These will pierce the poly really easy. You don't need to pre-drill any of your panels. Make sure to install your panels underneath each other from the top down. The bottom edge is screwed into the trim board that runs on the inside. This is what the porch looks like over the door. And this is what the overhang looks like on the window side. So because I've got nothing to nail here to, this is only half inch plywood, I can only nail to my rafters. So I'm gonna put a little block of wood here and it's gonna help secure this a bit more. So what I'm doing is just getting some little blocks of wood for nailers, but make sure and drill them out first because if you just go and screw them in, they're just gonna split. Like I did this one, just trying to cut corners. Just, just drill them out first. There, now I've got something. Just screw that too right there. All right, I've got some blocking there and blocking here. So now I can finish tying in this loose stuff. I don't like that at all. Here's the other thing you're gonna wanna do. You can see how this just, you know, I don't look good. So I wanted to angle this. So now I've gotta do the same thing to this. Just gonna take my T-square, make a line, cut it out. Then you're going to want to round this corner because you can just imagine just smashing yourself. That's not awesome. Ow! Oh! Oh my gosh! Ow! Dang it! Ow! Oh, I forgot about those. Shoot. After I got it cut out, I just took my little multi-tool with a sander and sanded down those rough edges. Next up I wanted to find a solution for still securing those panels a little bit more and this aluminum edging did great. It's just an aluminum band. That's just gonna keep this from 
bouncing around. I like it. I'm gonna do one more. To cut them to size, I just used my multi-tool with a metal cutting blade and then installed them snugly with a screw to that inside trim board that runs along the top. Cool. That will be flapping around now. So I found this at Menards. It isn't the intended use. It's a termination bar, 10 foot. It's aluminum for roofing, but it's flexible and light. And I wanted something I could bend and be waterproof. This is just perfect for what I had intended. But that's what it is right there. It's not cheap. It was about 12 bucks a stick, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's what it looks like in here now. That's, that's much better. It's not, especially on the edges here, it was just kind of loose, you know? I just didn't like how loose it was. This is perfect solution. I love it. Now it's time to hang your door. I used light decorative hinges and a small door pull with a barrel lock. At the end of the day, you can use whatever you'd like. You can install your porthole window with some construction adhesive and screws. Really easy to do. And the trim piece goes on the outside. Ha! That is super cool. And this just opens up for fresh air. Cool. To build the bench, you use the two one-foot sections that you cut from your half-inch sidewalls. I made my bench six foot eight inches long. You can do whatever you'd like. You can just cut them off and then using scrap two by fours and scrap pieces of wood, you're going to add reinforcements along the length and along the seams. All right, you can see here what I did. I just added reinforcements to the bottom of my sleeping bench. I just used some scrap wood and two uh, two by fours that I still had from this project. So now I'm going to cut some legs and the bench will be done. Cut your legs to whatever size you think you're going to want your bench. But keep in mind if you want a five gallon composting bucket toilet underneath, make it so that it'll fit underneath the bench. All right, so I've got these like kind of just really loosely uh, screw down. I'm going to turn it over, screw them in better, but this side's going against the wall and I want it to uh, go over the kind of trim piece I have on the bottom. And then this piece is going to be in the front, so I kind of wanted more support. So that's why those are angled differently. So when you sit in the front, you got a little more support and then this gives room back here so you're not hitting the edge. Now I build the table over here, up here. Using the cutoff pieces that we did on this board earlier, make two legs appropriately sized to whatever you'd like the height of the table to be and install them with angle brackets. So you got these little brackets here screw in the wall. Oh, I like it. It's starting to feel like something now. Now I'm going to go get my mattress, my foam that I need to cut down, open that up and like decorate, I guess. <laughs> my favorite part. I'm just going to use some of this just kind of soft cotton, like rope ribbon I got to go around the window, just put it in with the uh, construction adhesive. There we go. For a cushion on the bench, I went to Walmart and bought a twin foam mattress. They come rolled up, you unroll them, they kind of expand in size, and it was the cheapest option I could find for what I needed. To cut it down, I just used a straight edge and a marker, and then just literally took a giant kitchen knife that was nice and sharp to cut it out. If you have an electric bread knife, that works great on foam like this. 
Perfect. All right. Let's see how she feels. Oh yeah. Oh, this is good. And I feel like this needs a little pull out. But <laughs> not today. One thing that needed attention was filling the gaps of these uh, corrugated panels. And they do sell a foam that matches this. So you just go buy the package of foam and slowly just fit them in place, cutting little pieces as you go. And that's going to keep mosquitoes and wind out. Make sure you caulk all your seams with a weatherproofing seal, and don't forget the window too. For trim, I just took some of my little scrap pieces that I liked and used those for the window. Just cut them to size, and I was good to go. For the top curve, another piece of rope type material with construction adhesive would do, and three screws, top and each side, to secure it in place. I think I found my spot. I think I can get through here. Pull down some of this dead stuff. Pull it right in here. It'd be super cool. Maybe right there. by hand where I want it and get this cleaned out in here. Oh, this is just a cozy little Sparto spot. I like it. Just logging on the road. Oh. Let's see if that's going to be the right. be a lot easier if you had two people. Well, looks like everything fared all right in the travel. I would say I went about 10, 11 miles, maybe a little farther to get here. And uh, she did good. Hang the pictures back up. Make a fire pit here. This will be great. Oh, it's gonna be awesome.
can stabilize it by using these stabilizing jacks on both the front and the back. It makes it nice and solid. Now this part here, I wanted to put porch boards and I just decided not to, but it's definitely something you could do. So you can sit under this porch. This porch is two feet and this also is two feet. The other thing you could do with this is grab a friend and you could move this by hand. You could move it pretty easy. So just for a little coverage on this lower part, just using these paper shades, I cut them to length and um, just use double-sided like sticky tape. So if you do want a little bit of privacy, you can have it. Otherwise, you can just look at the forest. Ready shade, this is what these are, just a paper shade. This is the natural and it is 36 by 72 and two of these will do the sides. You can just cut them up. So now I'm gonna do this side. Just sticking this underneath. When you're ready to just use this porthole, you could just go on the outside and take a bungee cord and just get a piece of screen so that you can keep the uh, bugs out and you can actually get some cross ventilation in here. Well guys, hope you liked the video. <laughs> ah, getting attacked. See you in the next one. Scroll in the woods. She gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy. <laughs> she gone.